Post-release, ARMS has really followed in the footsteps set in place by Splatoon very closely. Rather than just releasing a full-fledged $60 competitive title with all of the bells and whistles that may or may not get overlooked, the ARMS team released a mostly complete game and withheld some of those more quality of life type features to be trickled down throughout the game's first year. And in my opinion, this is probably the smartest thing they could do, especially in this current gaming environment or the current gaming industry, where it's smart to have people talking about your game as much as possible on the internet. And with these new, basically monthly, content updates coming out, it has really kept the community talking about it every month. I mean, you could argue that a lot of these updates just bring in things that should have been in the game from the start, but like I said, in this current environment, the way that they've released all this stuff is actually pretty smart. Um, if we're looking at the Splatoon model of things, they finished their big or bigger content updates about a year after release, and if we're looking at that, it might be safe to say that update 5.3 for ARMS might be one of the last bigger content updates that we see. Um, like I said, it isn't the biggest features in the world and might have been able to be in the game from the start, but either way, it's super exciting and good stuff. The biggest part of this update is the new dashboard menu, which includes a new leaderboard as well as some tutorials. The rankings can be sorted globally or regionally, and each show the top 200 players in their respective zones. This information was previously available on the Japanese ARM site, but is now streamlined and it's a whole lot easier to look at, and just the fact that it's integrated into the game now makes it a whole lot easier to be aware of who's on that dashboard at all times. You can also sort the rankings by character now, which wasn't available on the website version, which is really cool to look at because it's actually only going to show you if you're in the universal top 200. So for example, more unpopular characters like Misango only have a top four players on the dashboard, including one of my favorite Misango players. And overall, this can give you an idea of which characters are most popular among top players. The second half of the dashboard features a whole plethora of videos to help improve your skills. There are some basic universal combat tips, some character specific tips, as well as some videos from recent official tournaments. All of these written blurbs are super helpful and the accompanying videos are nice as well, even though they have no commentary. I'd even recommend seasoned players to go back and read through these guides as there's a lot of info that you might have forgotten or not even known in the first place. The tournament videos are another great addition as well because there's no better way to learn than to watch someone who's better than you. The update also brought 15 new pictures to the gallery. There were a few that I didn't recognize, but mostly I think these were just already existing pieces that have been posted to Twitter or other social media being held for another update like this. Among these were a few new Arms Confidential pieces, which talked about Dr. Coil, Headlock, and the so-called second generation of Arms fighters. These are all good reads. You've probably already read them if you're into the lore like me and searched the internet and scoured all over, but they're still good reads. Although they're generally pretty vague, I do love reading these. Um, it's sort of bad in that they remind me of how much I wish they had fleshed out the story in the game from the get-go, but it also made me that much more excited for the Free Arms comic coming out next month, so look forward to that, and lore heads, rejoice. Other than the dashboard and the new pictures in the gallery, there was really no other big brand new piece of content here, but there were some minor and major tweaks to existing characters and arms, such as a buff to Ribbon Girl's aerial dash and a nerf to her ground dash. Um, this was a very minor tweak, but it does feel a lot different. Um, that air dash is super quick now. The ground dash doesn't feel slow, but you can definitely tell it's different. Um, a slightly bigger change came as well with a buff to the rate that Misango gains his rush in his blue and red forms, making it even with the rest of the roster. You'll still gain rush faster in the yellow form, but you won't suffer a penalty 
for using his other stances while you're trying to charge your rush gauge up. Misongo also saw a few cool changes to his default arms and that all of the poison arms will now do a substantial amount more of damage upon impact. This is a huge change and really makes the poison attribute a whole lot more viable. Prior to the update, the Charged Scorpio and Scully arms would only apply the poison debuff with no additional charge damage. Now, instead of the Scully's base 70 damage and the Scorpio's 90, they'll both do 20 more damage on impact when charged, in addition to applying that debuff. This was a real weakness that I saw in the first week Misango was released, and I'm very happy to see this buff in place. Perhaps now we'll start to see a lot more default Misangos. I really do have mixed feelings about this whole trickle down method that developers have been using over the last few years to release their games. On one hand, it feels super weird to buy a $60 game that feels really incomplete and empty, but on the other hand, it's really nice to 10 months later still have new things to talk about and get excited about with everyone else. I don't know, there's pros and cons to both sides, but either way, I think we need to start judging a lot of these competitive games a year after their release, because ARMS on release compared to now really looks like a different game. It's really a full and complete game now. I think that this whole dashboard thing with the leaderboard and tutorials in there really brings this game around full circle. It just feels like a true finished product now. Um, in my opinion, this is really the definitive modern fighting game with this dashboard feature. There's no experience quite like it. One of the best games on the Switch, if not the best. Let me know your thoughts on this new update down in the comments. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed and subscribe to my channel for the latest Switch content available. This is Max from Max Culture and thank you so much for watching.